Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. We have right here one of the new iMacs. I don't know if you guys have heard about these. Uh, they're very, very sleek. And to prove it's a new iMac, I'm going to go ahead and twist it. You can't... Where, where'd the back of it go? It's not there. There's a full side view of the new iMac. Unreal. Yes, we have already unboxed this one because we're going to demonstrate Parallels. You can download a copy of Parallels right now for your Mac at parallels.com slash desktop. Now, the thing about this video that I think you're going to be most excited about, I mean, beyond uh, demonstrating what Parallels can do on your Mac, uh, even though this isn't your Mac, <laughs> we're going to tell you how you can get a new iMac, which I have right over here sitting inside the box. I'll show you the end of the video. I'll give you the details of the giveaway at the tail end of this video. Uh, but to demonstrate or to better demonstrate what Parallels can do for you, uh, we've got John Schmuck, sorry, Kurt Schmucker. I'm here with John Uppendahl in the background. I've got the whole Parallels team in my home office here. Uh, Kurt is the senior product manager for Parallels Desktop for the Mac, and he's gonna be demonstrating Parallels uh, with Windows 7 and Windows 8. And you can run, the nice thing with Parallels, you can run Windows 8 and Windows 7 and Chrome OS and, well, any just about any distribution of Linux side-by-side -side on the same screen. But we're going to start with Windows 7. Do you want to pop your head in there, Kurt? Even oh. though I called you John a second ago. I apologize for that. My bad. Just want to make sure we are good to go. We are good to go. So we have Parallels Desktop 8 running on this Mac. Yes, that's correct. And so on this Mac, which is, of course, running Mountain Lion, I've got... Parallels running Windows 7 here in this window. So notice the level of integration we have here. Windows cursor, Mac cursor. Windows cursor, Mac cursor. Just like that. If I want to take a file from the Mac desktop and drag it to Windows, I just do this. The file appears. I can double click on it. It happens to be a PowerPoint presentation. I'll double click again. There we go. Well, it did the whole conversion for you. Not a conversion. It's just moving the file over there. There's no conversion at all. There's Win, Win Office is inside Windows 7 in this virtual machine. And so I can take this particular file and go through an ordinary PowerPoint file, as you'd expect, and do various things. Now, one thing you might not realize is we're actually looking at Parallels now the way that a mi minority of our users do. We're looking at Windows running in a window. It turns out about 82% of people who use Parallels Desktop don't use it this way. They don't even want to see the Windows Desktop. So because of that, we added a button right here to help them quickly go to that preferred way of viewing. And now, Windows 7 is gone. And you just see PowerPoint for Windows running as if it were a Mac application on your desktop. Change the window size, move it around, run it side by side with Pages, with Keynote, and anything you want. It's just a kind of funny looking Mac application. And that's how you can think about it. But it's still a Windows program. Absolutely. Looking like it's running natively on a Mac. Yeah, exactly right. Okay. We want people to be able to run their Windows applications and their Mac applications side by side. And we want to take as many features as we can, the goodness of the Mac OS, and bring it to Windows applications. So what would be better than to show right here a feature of Mountain Lion everybody knows about, that's dictation. This is a demo of dictation support in PowerPoint for Windows. Okay, so... <laughs> You just used a feature in OS X in Windows. Yes. Okay, I just wanted to get that clear. That's and so I, well, I'd love to take credit for the great speech to text, but that's not us. Right. We're passing that data to Apple. They send it back. We grab that data, funnel it to Windows 7, and funnel it to PowerPoint for Windows, all without you knowing about it. Hmm. So any Windows application that can accept text that has a cursor, you can put text in with the dictation. And I think that's a really great feature to have for people. Well, the thing is, is a lot of users out there want Office for Windows, but they still want to be on a Mac. And this is well, the best of both worlds right exactly, there. Exactly right. And that's the goal, is to have it be your Windows applications just work the way you want, and you don't have to think about them being different than, than your Mac applications that you already know and love. So if I'm in here now, and if I now show you another feature, again, doing with text input, if I just type, of course... Oop. I'm in English, but if I go up here and change the Mac setting for language, which is right here, to Russian. Mm. 
Whoa, okay, so now you're typing in Russian. Exactly. And that's the beauty here. The max is Cyrillic, easy. sorry, is that you're, the, you're typing in, in Russian in right, Cyrillic okay. font. The beauty of this is the max ease of use for switching between languages is legendary. That's great. Mac users are used to that. So we, again, we want to take that feature from the Mac OS and make it available to Windows applications. Now see, what, what's interesting, you know, there are two types of users. There are people who love OS X and there are people who love Windows. And it's usually like there's a dividing line. And some people want to try OS X, but they don't want to lose the familiarity of Windows. This is almost like that, that perfect stop gap that allows them to, to make that leap. And it's even more than a stop gap because you can sort of dial how much Windows you want to see and how much Mac you want to see. Now I've dialed the Windows. I don't even see the Windows desktop. No, it's... If I was more comfortable in Windows, I could still leave that there. I could even make it go full screen and just have that experience. As I get more and more comfortable with the Mac, I might dial it back down. So you get to adjust that lever and that position between Mac OS and Windows that you want, you're comfortable with at a certain time. Yeah. I think that's very important to note. Uh, you, you've also got, with Parallels, uh, the ability to support the boot camp partition? Correct. If you've gone to the trouble of installing a boot camp partition, put Windows on it, you can create a virtual machine with Parallels that will point to that installation of Windows. You don't have to install it again, things like that. Perfect. You can go back and forth between Parallels and boot camp as you need. Because you can't, you can't do this in boot camp. No. And that, <laughs> that's the beauty of running side by side. Yeah. I couldn't drag a file from one place to another because boot camp takes over your Mac, yeah. right? It's a wonderful solution, but it's not it's cumbersome for some workflow. That's true. That's true. I'm going to go back now to showing the Windows desktop. I'm going to change back into English because my Russian is not that good. <laughs> Better than mine, probably. I, I, and is that a word? I don't know. It is. That's Russian in Russian. Oh, okay. Yeah. I now know that I'm not going to try to pronounce that right. because I don't know what an upside down and Nor do I. Looks like. Nor do I. So, you, as you know, because you're a Windows user also, you know that you need the start menu to do various things, mm -hmm. right? So where, where's that? Well, well, uh, how at, do I get to it? At least in Windows 7. We're, get, we're getting there. I have something to show you there too. So here, I want to see the Windows start menu. Oh. There it is, right there. And you can launch applications, do what you need to do. That's so great. you could really be, you can get a Mac and still have yes. exactly as right. much of a Windows experience as could be expected when you're running an OS 10. And as much as you want. You can yeah. dial it back down. You can go full screen and you see the complete Windows experience. Yeah. Your your call. I, I like, But I like the fact that the start menu pops up here. Out, I mean, I'm in OS X, but there's the start menu. Like, right. exactly. Outside of a normal window. And I kind of like it up here in the menu bar. It feels natural to me. Some people like it in the dock. So we, you can do that also in parallels. Oh, okay. Glad so, you gave that option there. So now I'm going to go back to showing the Windows desktop. And I'll quit PowerPoint for a moment. And we'll talk about another feature. Sometimes you're surfing in Safari, going various places, and something like this might happen. You go to a website, and mm. oh, damn, it doesn't work. It needs Internet Explorer 5.5 or later. That might be a challenge. So. When this happens, this could be caused by a variety of things. It could be that this site uses ActiveX and there's no support for that on the Mac. In this particular case, I suspect the designer of this site didn't want to have to test it in other browsers. Right. So they hard-coded a browser dependency in the site. Okay, fine. Not going to stop me. So what we did, we added a new button right here in Safari. See that button? That's new. Yeah. And it says, open in IE. And so I just click that button once. IE will open. Ah. And it'll go to the exact, the exact same URL, and now you can interact, interact with that site the way you want it In to. Windows? Exactly. So, okay, I, I have to ask a question then. Even though you're inside a Windows version, a windowed version mm. of Windows, would that option still work even yeah, if you had... Coherence? The, yeah, coherence. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I do it this way because IE opens up, takes over the whole screen. You right. can't see both. So right. for demo purposes, this is better. Yeah. But either one, of course, works. It's, it's, that is so much more intuitive then I, I think Microsoft did with Windows 8 and clicking links and figuring out, which we'll get to there in, in, a, in a few in a moments. Moment. Exactly. Now, you could have done this yourself manually. You could have gone, oh, I need to launch Windows, launch IE, copy the URL from the Mac, go over, paste it in IE. We just made it very convenient for you with this button. It saves time. Exactly. I, I'm a huge fan of that. And having it be natural and easy to do is what a Mac user is going to want. I think any user would tell you the truth. My dad's not a Mac user, really, but he wants ease of use, too. So so those are the things I wanted to show you in Windows 7. We can go back here later and show you some more stuff. I thought I'd show you some Windows 8 use in yeah. Parallels. 
Some of my demo will work better if we only have one virtual machine running, so I'll do that now by shutting down Windows 7 and launching Windows 8. We can come back and run a whole bunch of OSs at the same time later in the demo. Well, and, and yeah, just to explain again, you can run them side by side if you want. So in this particular machine, I have three versions of Windows loaded, Win 7, Win 8, and Windows XP, and three versions of the Mac OS, Lion, Mountain Lion, and Snow Leopard Server. I can run any of those. I can run them all at the same time. So in Parallels, you can install as many OSs as you have space on your hard drive. You can run as many simultaneously as you have RAM for, and that's the only real limiting factor. So I'll start Windows 8. Yeah, I like the fact that you can run uh, Lion or Mountain Lion as a virtual machine to test software. And it's test really settings great. And users. People have been wanting this yeah. for years, and we're really happy to. We first provided it in Parallels Desktop 7, and we're continuing it in 8. And it's a great feature for a tester, for a developer, See, for a variety of things. And that, to me, is the big win. Specifically, for those who don't know if they want Windows 8 yet, they want to stick with XP, they want 7, but they don't want to lose their settings. Bring it into a virtual machine. You know, don't uh, don't take a, a scorched earth policy and still be able to find out, are you going to like what Windows 8 has to offer on a, a computer? Exactly right. And you might still have some applications that only run in XP. Keep them. Yeah. That's just fine. And you can run them in coherence mode so they run invisibly. Exactly right. Until you need them. That, it's, it's very convenient. It's as clean as I could ever expect it to be. Oh, and by the way, with the giveaway, uh, we're giving away a copy of not, well, not just the, the iMac here at the end of the video. Well, we're not giving it away today. We're going to tell you how you can get it. A copy of Parallels Desktop 8 and a copy of Windows 8 and a copy of Windows 7 and a, a drive, a super drive. So, you know, even though these new iMacs don't have an optical disc, we're going to pretty much give you everything thanks to Parallels. So continue here with the, I wanted to tell them, get them, Very good. you know, their appetite wet there. And uh, so in some ways, Windows 8 is just another OS that we run. So it runs, I hear it running okay. in a window and it All works. Right. It yeah, works okay. just fine. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay, sure. And you can launch things. I can go here and launch, um, oh, let's launch IE. We just use that. Let's try that. Great. I happen to be going to the last URL. I was checking something out in, in Los Angeles. Let's go back now to the desktop. Just put my mouse down here in the corner and you see the start screen. And you go back that way. And that's where Windows 8 does, in fact, differ from other OSs. Things happen differently at the edge of the screen. So we added some features to, take, to help that be even, even easier for a Mac user. So not watch. If I do my mouse movement fast, right. Windows mm -hmm. cursor, Mac cursor, that's just as you expect. If I move my mouse slowly, however, I'm still moving my mouse, I'm still moving my mouse, it's stuck there. We call that feature sticky mouse. And that helps you do things like this. Bring up these controls, the charms, go over here and bring up the applications you've run recently. Go down over here. If you're in, in some application, go back to the start screen. Otherwise, you might slide over that right. real tiny hotspot and not hit it. So sticky mouse makes the operation easier for you. Hmm. But not only that, here you, you know, Windows 8 is very gesture oriented. So I want the charms to appear on the right side of the window. Let me just go on the trackpad and do that. Oh, I don't know. Well, I don't know if we can see the trackpad in the video, but so all I'm going to do is go over the trackpad, all right, and yep. move my finger like that. He did. He, he saw it right there, kind of ish. <laughs> so again, we're taking advantage, special advantage of Windows 8 features to make it more natural for the Mac user. Wow. Most people have a trackpad if they're using MacBook Pro, something like that, or they've bought a Magic Trackpad because it's so convenient. All the as many of the gestures as are possible from Windows 7 and Windows 8, we make work in Parallels. Hmm. And so again, that makes the experience more natural. I don't know about you, but when I started losing the gestures in Lion, they were so great. When they were gone, it was like sad. I, I, was, I felt I couldn't do things. Right. So they're all back in Parallels now. And you might have noticed, I have dock icons for Windows 7 applications, Windows 8 applications. I can launch them here oh. from the dock. So if I, I'll click here. And I'll go to the Microsoft Store. I see. So essentially, you can have your your dock can be a collection of all the icons from Windows Seven or Windows Eight or OS Ten. All exactly right. So exactly you can right. tap it if if it's if the machine's not running. I assume that it would launch the machine. You are exactly right. Okay. If Parallels is not running. It'll launch Parallels. It'll launch the VM. It'll launch the app, and there you are, ready to it's go. It's easy. Now, suppose you want to keep this icon in your dock because you like that so much. 
just mouse down here and say add to launch pad or add to the dock Either one will work. So uh, some similar to how it works just in OS 10 natively. Other exactly. Than Launchpad is... Launch, Launchpad is uh, uh, a Mac OS 10 feature here. Right. And I can go to... Oh, so it adds it there. As, it, as it in Launchpad. Right. Exactly. Or the dock, wherever you want to put it. And the, the Launchpad, some people ask, well, why use it? A lot of people who aren't very familiar with OS 10 really like it because it's easy to get to. You can use the gesture. And the gesture, of, gesture like, of course, works too. Just like that. Yeah, just like that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's really, uh, it's really convenient. It's really easy. Let me show you one more place where we've integrated the Mac OS and Windows. So in Windows 8, if you, for example, buy something at the store, let's see if we can buy something free here. Let's find something small so we don't have a long download time. Yeah, I've, I've had challenges with this. Well, Fresh Paint's actually a pretty good free application. Okay, this so is 160K. That's it can't, why it's, can't get much better than hopefully that. Hopefully my internet connection will be able to keep now up Now we, we start installing this. That's great. We leave the store, we go back to the desktop, maybe we even hide Windows 8. And look, not only has it appeared here, but it appears here in Mountain Lion Notification Center. Nice. So we grab all the notifications from Windows 8 that's in their so-called, their, their notification system, and we funnel them into the Notification Center of Mountain Lion. And of course, they're archived there. You can go back there and see what was there, IMs you got from your friends who are on Windows, things like that. It's a really nice integration point. Even if you were you had put Windows 8, hidden it, put it in the dock, gone off to do some work in Pages or in Safari, that notification will still appear there. Hmm. With Windows 8, that's the Windows 8 notification the window, window center? 8, we're, we're grabbing the Windows 8 notification and hmm. making it appear in the Mountain Lion Notification Center. Hmm. Now, you might wonder, well, let's go to another one's applications again. Let's go back to IE just for grins and go into Coherence. So we're not seeing the Windows 8 desktop. Well, so it's and notice what, I, what happened there. It yes. pushed into full screen app. Yeah, exactly right. But in, uh, the, all the apps that were open, it did the store and it did IE. Yeah, so now you can use gestures to go. You go back ah. to the store, whatever. Go back to your desktop. That is so. The, doing Windows 8 almost works better with with this than it does itself. I mean, because look, you can jump to any full screen application just by gesturing. And I know there's the tab version and all that stuff, but this is just... You're not the first person who's told me that. Easier. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, more convenient. I mean, especially if you're used to, to, to managing Windows this way. Wow. So it pushed each full screen Windows 8 app, the, the Metro or Me Modern Metro UI, apps, exactly, whatever they're right. calling them uh, this week, uh, into in full screen on, on OS X natively. Wow. We noticed that they're, they're full screen apps. Of course, we pushed them into a, uh, a screen yeah. in, uh, in the Mission Control. So you can jump right to the store. You can jump to exactly. Internet Explorer, the, your Mac desktop. and Oh, wow. Okay. Or even better. You know, you can't see the, the start menu now. Why? Because there is no start right, menu. Right, there's none. So what can we do? How can we help you get back to those Windows applications when you can't see the start screen? Well, we took a lesson from the Mac OS. Launchpad is really cool. So why don't we do something that looks kind of like Launchpad and just show you that. Right, that makes sense. That's the Launchpad, okay, right? Yeah, yeah, that exactly makes sense. Exactly right. Yeah. And now we can launch an app, you know, like, uh, let's go to my photos. There we go. Like that. And then it pushes it into, into a launch screen and oh, okay. so on. That's really easy. That's convenient. Isn't that nice? And you know, this screen is very sharp. I'm sitting like right on top of it. Not quite right in a display, but it's really close. So those are the kind of things I wanted to show you. We've tried to make Windows 8 as integrated as we possibly can with the Mac OS and bring some of the Mac OS 10 goodness over to Windows. I promised you earlier that we would uh, let's see now. Let's go back to the desktop. Sure. There we are. And let's leave coherence. We're in the in the Windows 8 desktop now. We can go back to the start screen. And I can run lots of OSs at the same time. We can launch Windows 7 again. And OS 10. And we can launch Lion. Yeah. So at this moment. We're actually running four operating systems simultaneously on this Mac. Mountain Lion is the host, Windows 7, Windows 8 as guest OSs, and Mountain Lion as a guest, and Lion as a guest OS. That's pretty cool. Well, I, 
I, I'll take it one step further. I love the fact that you can easily download Ubuntu and Chrome OS directly from Parallels. You don't, even have, to, you don't have to mess with download servers or anything. You just press new and then it opens this up and then there you go. You can download Ubuntu free. Uh, Android is in there now. Uh, Chrome OS, just click and it installs it. And then you're ready to go in like a few minutes time. You're absolutely correct. And, and the, the Windows free. 8 release preview is still available. Oh, you yeah. can download that for free. One click here, pick the language you want. The other day for grins, I installed the Arabic version of Windows 8. Ran just hey, fine. Why not? You know, <laughs> hey, you, you, can. you can do it. You can do it. Sure, why not? Now, I, I think that's really, really, uh, that's a convenient way of, of trying uh, operating systems you may not be familiar with. Most people haven't even run Chrome OS. I mean, they, they've used Chrome Understood. possibly, but Understood. not the OS. And so here now we have all the OSs running simultaneously here. And if I log into Windows 7, we'll see that running also. The flexibility this gives you is incredible. Um, so I have these OSs and more running on my MacBook Pro. When I take that someplace, I can run anything you throw at me. Right, right. And there's no app you, that you can find that I can't run on that machine. So I don't have to worry about stuff. Well, it's yeah. about that, you know, that layer of compatibility, but not, you, usually when we talk about that flexibility, sometimes it could be a bit of a challenge with usability. And it seems that you've bridged that gap. I certainly, I think so. And I certainly hope so. We're always looking at more things to do, um, but the general ability to run Windows apps as if they're they're just Mac apps right. on your desktop <laughs> gives people the flexibility they want, which is probably why so many of our users use coherence and don't um, uh, talk, don't even see the Windows desktop. Now, we didn't talk about one other feature in here, this button right here that says, I've got an old PC, I'm moving to a new Mac, please just grab all the information from that PC and bring it into a virtual machine. Migrate your old PC into a virtual machine, all your data, all your applications, it's all there. And then you're ready to go. Really? So it's a wizard of yes. switching yes. Like, platforms. Exactly. It's a, it's, it was a wizard that migrates your PC into a virtual machine on your Mac. Then I guess what would keep someone from doing it other than, well, I, who wouldn't want a new iMac? I, I don't, would anybody not want a new iMac? I don't think anybody on the planet would refuse. No, I don't want a new iMac. I think everyone would want a new, I can't even, I'm sitting right next to it. I can't even see it. I can see the screen and then it disappears by me. It's like that Indiana Jones in the last crusade, you know, at the end where he walks out and he, he can't see the platform that he steps on. It's like that. It's barely visible. Like the, the side, I can see the screen. And the last thing I'll show you is, remember I did that open in IE? Yeah. Well, suppose you're running two OSs at the same time. Which windows do you want it open in? You know, we don't know and we don't care. We'll do it in all of them. Both, hey, why not? We'll launch them everywhere. Yeah, there you go. There we go. And then of course it launches different uh, of, instances. Of course. And, and different icons actually, slightly different. Slightly, yeah. Yes. Well, there being the different OS's. Wow. Easy. Yeah, exactly. Simple, fast. Um, it works, it definitely works. I mean, certainly, there, there's something to be said about you know saving time, reducing frustration, and being able to stay comfortable, and that's the the one thing that a lot of users have issues with is they want to be comfortable, and, and pain is when it, when pain is introduced, that's when you know, it's usually the, the switch just gets flipped off. They don't want to deal with it anymore. So reducing the amount of pain that one might experience, uh, I think you guys have, have done a pretty good job with it pain and steps to accomplish a task. You've got a job to do. Don't have the tool get in my way. Have the tool make it easy for me to accomplish those things. Yeah. You mentioned how great it is to be able to run copies of the Mac OS in a virtual machine for testing. You probably get lots of beta software people are asking you to try, <laughs> and that can really wreak havoc on a machine. Oh yeah. Run it in a VM. If it does wreak havoc, throw it away. Yeah. Just install a new one. It's really easy. I do it all the time. Yeah, it's getting easier. So parallels.com slash desktop is where they can download uh, a, a version to try a trial. right now uh -huh. and, and do pretty much everything that we've demonstrated here Yes, uh, on their Mac right now, if they have a Mac. What if they don't have a Mac? Don't have a Mac, we can't help you. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's sad. But it, it's happy because we are giving away a Mac. Yes, we are. Are we ready to talk about those details now? We're good? All right. So thank you, everybody. for Oh, we have 872 people tuned in right now. By the way, thank you for all the likes, and hopefully you guys liked 
our effort here. Uh, here's what we're going to do, guys. It's going to be a, a Twitter giveaway. Uh, this is the iMac that we're giving away. There's one in this box here. It's so big, it's, it's filling up the entire video screen right now. This is still in the box. The cellophane, the tape is still uh, on, on top. In fact, I can, I can lean it down to try to show you there. It is still taped up. This could be yours. This, as well as a copy, a full copy of Parallels Desktop 8 for Mac, as well as a full copy of Windows 8, Windows 7, and we're also going to be giving you a super drive. All of that could be yours if you tweet a tweet that I'm going to tweet out. So I'm going to give you guys the choice of whether or not uh, you want to receive this iMac in, in the box completely untouched. Not this one, the one in that box. Uh, if you guys want me to autograph that one, I will. Uh, I, I'll do anything you, you want. I'll unbox it on my channel, possibly even call you up to join me virtually as, as we unbox it and you have me autograph it, if you want, if you're the giveaway recipient. Uh, so watch for a tweet from me, and it's, it's going to be very simple. I will put that link directly for the tweet to retweet in this video's description. So all you have to do is just click when it's ready. Uh, the tweet is likely going to say something along the lines of, you know, RT this, uh, for a chance to get a uh, Parallels Mac, and by the way, that's at Parallels Mac. That's who you can start following on Twitter right now, these Parallels guys who are making this possible. Uh, and then uh, it'll also probably include a link to this video that you just watched and hopefully liked and shared. Uh, and then possibly, uh, possibly, can I, can I say that? I think I just did. Is that Russian? Uh, I just made it Russian. I'm making up Russian words now. Uh, also, uh, probably either the at Locker Gnome follow, or user on Twitter or the at Chris Perillo user on Twitter. It'll be very, very simple. All you need to do is just tap the retweet button when it's ready. I'm um, checking to see if there are... Oh, yeah. Apparently, people really would want me to autograph it. I'm watching the comments as they're uh, streaming in here. Uh, and... They're they're asking a few different questions that we definitely did cover Please. during the uh, during the course of uh, the this particular live broadcast. So those of you who are asking uh, about uh, the quality of the video, it's a 360p video. YouTube doesn't let me broadcast in 720p yet, but I got to tell you, this screen, I, I'm 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 looking at my old iMac. This is an early 2008 behind it. I don't know if you can even see it. This thing, it's completely covered. It if I turn it to the side again, you might be able to see it. Just, you have no idea how thin that is. I mean, until you... It is almost razor thin. I, where the hell did they put the computer? It's not even there. You see the screen and that's it. it. It makes my old iMac look not as nice as I thought it was. I mean, it's a nice iMac, don't get me wrong, just a few years old. Nothing like this one. Boy, oh, you guys might want to know the specs before we close out here of the iMac that we're giving away with Parallels. Let's see here. It's a 21.5 inch... Uh, 19 or 16 by 9 aspect ratio so that's it's the 21.5 inch iMac 2.7 gigahertz quad core intel core i5 uh, and it looks like 8 gigs of ram dang dude you parallels did nice with this thing can i qualify for the giveaway i, I need to i need to be upgrading my iMac too uh it looks like it's got a, a terabyte hard drive uh the uh, uh geforce gt 640m graphics processor and of course, everything else that the iMac or the new iMac comes with. So it's definitely a good machine that uh, could be yours. Anything else you want to say to the audience before we go ahead and close out? No, other than just the flexibility that Parallels gives you to run anything you need to be a Mac user, be a Windows user when it's necessary for your job or for your hobby or whatever. It gives you flexibility. So hopefully uh, everyone is grateful for the effort that we've put forward. I appreciate Parallels uh, doing this for uh, the uh, uh, computer. I'm sorry, mobile? Yeah. Oh, the mobile experience. Yeah, uh, throw hang, that too. hang on. Uh, oh, yeah. We'll throw in a mobile app. Oh, the throwing in the mobile app. So what, hang on. What I was going to show everybody, I have the Parallels mobile app installed on my iPad. This is the one you're talking about, right? Yep. Perfect. So... From within this application, if I had my iMac booted up, which is where I keep my copy of Parallels, I could jump to any one of my virtual machines from my iPad. So if you want to run Windows, quote unquote, run Windows on your iPad, Parallels does make it easy. So I guess they're throwing in the mobile app too. I don't know what you're waiting for other than for me to post the link to the tweet that you need to retweet. Uh, so thanks again, guys, for, for joining us. Thank you for showing a little more what Parallels can do. And, and I think you, you've made a lot of people happy. And I know you're going to make one person very, very happy in a week's time. That's, that's from the time of this date 
being go gone out. So everybody, thanks again for uh, staying tuned. Thanks again for following. Thanks again for being a great part of this community. We'll see you later. <laughs>